Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Monday the 29th of May. Now, last week, the World Health Organization put out a release uh, showing that there was a possible causal relationship between COVID-19 vaccine and multiple sclerosis. And we're allowed to report on this because it is an official WHO paper. We're limited to other things we can report, but we can report this. Now, this is the paper here. Now, um, it says COVID-19 vaccination can induce multiple sclerosis via cross-reactivity with T helper cells. So quite an admission from the World Health Organization. Now, this isn't available on quite a few servers now, but I've uh, got DuckDuckGo on my um, on my lap, um, desktop so I, I could find it again. But that's, that's, that's it there. And it, it is, as I say, WHO publication, so we can actually talk about this. Nice to be able to talk about things. Now, what is this actually uh, showing? What What is going on here? Well, I'm going to sort of do a quick explanation of what uh, seems to be going on on so what we have here imagine this is a nerve fiber here so the nerve that the, the nerve impulses will travel down here and this will be in the brain or the spinal cord and these nerve fibers are surrounded by this protective myelin sheath and in the central nervous system they're made by cells called oligodendrocytes here we have the spike protein from a natural uh, sars coronavirus 2 infection and here we have the spike protein produced by the vaccine on its own now, in learning to recognise, this is the CD4 lymphocyte here, the T helper cell. This is the famous T helper cell that's disordered in um, in HIV. So when people become immunocompromised uh, in AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, um, what actually happens is, is the virus uh, destroys a lot of these CD4 helper cells until they can't produce any immune response. But here it's not lack of immune response, it's too much immune response. That is the, uh, the problem. So um, the CD4 is learning to recognise, rightly as in the principles of vaccination, these, uh, these spike proteins, and it can uh, beat up these spike proteins, which of course is, is uh, good. These are the spike proteins produced by the vaccine. And the idea is that will help the CD, hel CD helper cells to get rid of the spike protein should there be uh, a natural infection, which we could argue about. But the point is, the same sort of chemical profile that we're finding on the surface of the spike protein um, molecules there. We're finding very similar proteins on the surface of the, well, there are very similar proteins on the surface of the myelin sheath. So the T helper cells are also orchestrating a response which beats up on these uh, myelin sheaths. And when the myelin sheaths go uh, in the central nervous system, um, that is multiple sclerosis. Uh, the, my the myelin sheaths, of course, are essential. They facilitate what we call bouncing transmission much faster so-called saltatory transmission of nerve fibers they nourish protect the uh, protect the nerve fiber so without them basically you get um, progressive paralysis is the, is the main feature with multiple sclerosis and I've looked after many hundreds I guess of multiple sclerosis patients over the years horrible debilitating disease although with a very varying path so that's what seems to be happening, and that's reporting on this paper. So if you can't find it on Safari or something, do do try DuckDuckGo, because that's where I got it. I actually started to prep this uh, about three days ago, and when I went to click on it this morning, it just wasn't there. You know, one of those can't find it sort of make messages. Anyway, let's look at it in a little more detail now, because it's a pretty significant paper. And it's not only showing what this, this particular autoimmune reaction is to multiple sclerosis, but... Is there other autoimmune reactions? Well, the one I'm allowed to talk about is, is this one because it's a WHO publication. Um, you get the impression it's probably been taken down from some other servers, um, but hey, what do I know? Uh, now, this is the paper here. Uh, COVID-19 vaccination can induce. Now, this is, the, this is the WHO, so can induce multiple sclerosis via cross-reactive T helper uh, cell, CD4 hell cells, recognizing SARS coronavirus 2 spike protein, and as we've said, myelin, this essential myelin that protects the cells in the central nervous system. Now, the article goes on uh, both natural infection and mRNA vac based vaccinations can be accompanied by transient autoimmune phenomena. Now, this is pretty significant in itself because here we have the WHO uh, actually admitting that uh, SARS coronavirus 2 vaccines can cause autoimmune phenomena. This is actually a pretty big uh, breakthrough. Um, 
let, let's hope this paper stays up because it really is quite a groundbreaking piece. And I am live from the WHO website now via DuckDuckGo. Uh, and uh, and um, I can't remember the search engine now, but it's DuckDuckGo anyway. Um, do let me know if you find it on other search engines because I've had difficulty. Um, so onset of autoimmune disease confirmed by the World Health Organization. Now here we have a, a test case of two multiple sclerosis patients with clinical signs and new radiological signs. Now what this means is uh, radiological signs is the, um, if you do MRI of the brain and the spinal cord, it's very obvious when you see multiple sclerosis because you have these multiple patches. In the old days, multiple sclerosis used to be called disseminated sclerosis because you get patches in different parts of the body, hence the different uh, symptoms in different parts of the body from different lesions in the brain and spinal cord but we now call it multiple sclerosis. Uh, now they're saying it's a temporal relationship to the spike protein uh, vaccine. In other words, the vaccine came first and the multiple sclerosis came second. Uh, does this mean there's an automatic cause or correlation? No, it doesn't. But we go back to the title of the paper, COVID-19 vaccination can induce multiple sclerosis. So the very title of the paper is indicating that there is a, a causal relationship. At least that's the way I read the title of that paper. How long it will be there for, of course, is a different uh, matter. Um, the aim of the study, uh, the onset of multiple sclerosis uh, in two cases, uh, very likely, so they're saying very likely caused by uh, the CD helper cells that cross-recognize sars coronavirus 2 spike protein from myelin proteins. Now, um, spike-specific uh, T helper cells from peripheral, so they found these cells in peripheral blood and they found them in the cerebrospinal fluid. Most of you probably know the cerebrospinal fluid is the fluid that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. All the central nervous systems in this cerebrospinal fluid is a shock absorber, but it's also immunologically very important uh, as, as well. And they were underwent autoantigen screening. Now, an autoantigen is, is part of you. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's part of you. It's endogenous, um, but it stimulates the production of autoantibodies. So it's when one of your own proteins stimulates antibodies to beat up on your own proteins, which, of course, is the, the essence of autoimmune disease. And that is what is happening in this case, according to the WHO circular, which is, uh, which is still there. Um, um, so they looked up a, a list of uh, well-known uh, autoantigens in multiple sclerosis. These people knew what to look for. The results, self-reactive T-cells were uh, detected from spike-specific T-cell populations. So the, yes, the vaccine in that sense worked. It stimulated the T-helper cells, but also showed reactivity against various proteins. Now, this MBP, we'll look at in a minute, the MOG, is the myelin oligodendrocyte protein. Now, what that means is, this is, the, um, this is the central nervous system. Here's the myelin sheath. And in the central nervous system, this myelin sheath is produced by the oligodendrocytes or the oligodendroglial cells. So um, it's a protein that's specific to these cells that are uh, producing this myelin sheath, the oligodendrocytes. So these are specific myelin-related proteins. Now, I'm just going to give a quick, this is papers in parentheses here, but um, this is just to give a, some insight. This is about multiple sclerosis and myelin-based proteins. Um, my, 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 myelin-based protein, uh, so this MBP that they found the cross-reactivity to, one of the ones. So there's cross-reactivity between the myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein and the uh, spike protein. And there's also cross-reactivity between this myelin-based um, protein here. So central nervous system protein in the myelin as uh, MBP has long been studied as a factor in the pathogenesis and the beginning of autoimmune, the autoimmune neurodegenerative disease, multiple sclerosis. So this is not new science. This is well established. It is the cross reactivity with the antibodies produced from the vaccine that is new. And multiple sclerosis is characterized by central nervous system inflammation, demyelination, axonal loss, and as we said, progressive paralysis. So getting back to the paper, finally, we found pro-inflammatory T-cell clones. So in other words, these, the, the T-cells were involved as, as, as well. Um, now, t the T-cell involved here just seems to be the T-helper cells. Whether other ones were involved, we're not told. 
But anyway, these pro-inflammatory T-cell clones, like the CD helper cell, the CD4 cell, they recognize spoke pro- spike protein and uh, immunodominant myelin-based proteins. In other words, the beating up on the myelin sheath as well as the spike protein. And as we said, myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein peptides, which have previously been implicated in multiple sclerosis. Their conclusion, um, detailed studies of both peripheral blood and cerebrospinal fluid uh, derived CD4 plus T cells, that's the C helper, CD4 helper cells, the T helper lymphocytes, shows that the onset of multiple sclerosis in these two very likely caused by uh, the T helper cells, the clones, the, the population of these cells that are developed, that cross recognize SARS coronavirus 2 spike protein derived peptides and peptides derived from myelin proteins. In other words, it's beating up on the same, um, it's beating up on the same um, similar structures, uh, similar molecular structures in both of these uh, areas. Beating up on the spike protein is good. Beating up on your own um, myelin in the central nervous system is potentially uh, disastrous. So um, I think we'll actually leave that there. There's more. I'll tell you. Well, no, we'll go on for a bit more. There's, there's, there's always more. There's always more to say. But um, um, you've got the main effort. So that's just part of the text I was working on before I lost. Before I found the new DuckDuckGo site. Uh, now, post misrepresent research on multiple sclerosis vaccines found by two WHO databases. Now, the fact checkers have helpfully waded in on this, and um, quite a few fact checkers. It's obviously put the wind up them a bit. Um, very good of these fact checkers to tell us uh, what's going on, so we don't, don't need to bother thinking for ourselves. But I think we'll pass on it because I think we do like to think for ourselves. Now. This is a bit alarming because this is not new. Now, this is a paper here. This is another paper. New diagnosis of uh, multiple sclerosis in, in settings of mRNA COVID vaccine exposure. This is published, published, published in January 2022. So this is based on data collected in 2021. <clears throat> Why wasn't this highlighted at the time? Why wasn't it highlighted at the time? Multiple sclerosis uh, with onset uh, with onset in the settings of acute SARS coronavirus to virus infected people has been reported. So yes, it's possible after natural infection and reactivity of multiple sclerosis following mRNA COVID vaccines. There have been three reports of newly diagnosed multiple sclerosis following exposure to mRNA COVID vaccines. So yes, that is occurring in 2021. Uh, the association cannot be determined to be causal, of course, because it could be uh, caused by other factors. But it's temporal correlation, whereas the uh, new WHO paper goes further and says it's now likely. Um, we report a series of five cases of newly diagnosed multiple sclerosis following recent exposure of mRNA COVID vaccines. Now, this bit's a bit concerning. Latency from vaccination to initial presentation varied. Um, neurological manifestations in the clinical course appear to be typical for MS. So the time between people getting vaccinated and developing the features of multiple sclerosis varied. There was latency. How long could this latency be? We don't know. In these cases, it was fairly short because, of course, the vaccines only started in uh, in 2021. So these must have been within the course of a year. Are there more to come? Uh, we don't know that. Or at least we haven't been told that. Someone, there's probably some information around somewhere. Um, but there's multiple sclerosis responded as normal. So their conclusion was acute neurological deficits in the settings of recent mRNA COVID vaccination and administration may represent new onset multiple sclerosis. So we knew that in uh, 2022. And yet, nothing changed. Incredible. Why weren't we warned of these risks at a much earlier stage? Well, the, the, the research warned us, but it didn't translate into... Um, any meaningful findings. Right, now just a couple of quick things. Um, this is um, a petition 
if you're in the if you're in the UK, you can sign this petition here that we're concerned about the new WHO amendments and some amendments that are going to kick in in just a few months that we didn't know about that have been kept quiet. So if you click on that, if you're in the UK, you can sign that uh, petition. And when we get to 100,000 signatures, there has to be a parliamentary debate, albeit a fairly small one, but there has to be something. Let's get up, up to 100,000 and um, stop this uh, uh, these new international health uh, things from the World Health Organization. Or at least not stop them. But let's have a parliamentary debate rather than rubber stamping it. And the other thing, I'll put a link in, in the description as well, but I've started a sub stack as well. Um, don't know how much time I'll have to put on things, but um, you can put some, I'll put some quite detailed physiology and pathophysiology on there, and um, as well as news, more news related items. So there we go. World Health Organization, quite surprising really. COVID-19 vaccinations can induce multiple sclerosis from the WHO uh, itself. Um, and I can tell you about this one because it is an official WHO site. Um, let's hope the WHO publish more so I'm free to discuss more pathology. A bit concerning about what's going to happen over the next couple of years in terms of prevalence, but... Um, We'll find out, won't we? We'll leave it there for now and uh, thank you for watching.